Good evening and welcome to some evening chills this October night. We felt like covering something new and exciting that was coming out this week. Something that would inspire action or embrace the love of Swerve It Storks. Oh my god. What the fuck was that? I don't know what we just saw. It's amazing that Sausage Party ended up being probably the more intelligent and coherent of the animated movies this year. Pretty much. Well, yeah, pretty much. Where do I begin? Maybe you should begin. Okay. I'll start straight up saying I like this movie a lot more than I thought I was. Yeah, he like, came in wanting to hate this. Yeah. I mean, honestly, okay, it was it was between this movie and Birth of a Nation. And honestly, from the way I've been feeling recently, I was not into a doom and gloom kind of movie. Like, Plus, it's race movie, which, uh, fuck that noise. I don't want to deal with that shit right now. It's probably a good movie, but... it's no, I, hear, just, I hear it's a fantastic movie from... Just, fantastic film just don't want to deal with that right now yeah so i said well let's 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 go for something a little bit more lighthearted, upbeat even if it's stupid so we bit we bit our tongues and we said okay let's go see storks and even <laughs> though and even though the tr we we you you saw in our other reviews we said this this, this movie trailer looks, doesn't look good at looks all stupid looks fucking stupid it's and ripping off a of pixar short yeah, partly cloudy. And <laughs> but that being said, this movie really does know how to beat you into submission to just kind of accept its bullshit. It's so weird and so just out there. Not since Equestria Girls have I seen an animated world that is so so poorly designed that it should not exist. It should be collapsing completely on its own e into its own idiocy. So it should create a sinkhole and just destroy itself. Yes. Yes. <laughs> a question, girls. What a callback. Oh my god. This movie. Enough of my little pony. We're talking about birds. <clears throat> I wasn't. Okay. Um, so, yeah. The problem. <laughs> okay, while he while he laughed, the premise obviously is that Storks is is based on the old tale of Storks delivering babies. Uh, yeah, Storks deliver babies, but then decide don't deliver babies because why? It's tough. Mm -hmm. So now the so now it's a are commentary. They talking, are they talking like it's it's tough to deliver babies, or that there's no money in it? In which case, you you get even more. Oh my God. So that a business, an e business is comes out of this where they deliver packages, and it's sort of like a thing against Amazon, where it's just all a delivery service now, and storks are getting in on the money. And yeah, big corporation commentary, commentary, commentary. Oh, and they also have to have the obviously evil boss voiced by Kelsey Grammer, who just picked up a paycheck. This movie is like, uh, <laughs> this movie, I, I explained this to you and it kind of baffled you, but maybe other people get it. This movie is like a little kid that puts a rubber snake in his pants and is like helicoptering it around. And you as the adult are like sitting there laughing your ass off and the kid's just kind of smiling away all naive because he has no idea what, what is, what he's doing. That's what this movie is, because the fucking idea of just of artificial humans, there, there are dozens upon dozens of science fiction novels and stories and uh, uh, that, talk, that go in depth into the ethical, scientific, religious, human, just all the bad things that imply artificial humans. This movie doesn't give a shit about that. Okay. It just, it, yes, 
babies are literally off the rack on a conveyor belt. The reason why he's explaining this is because there's no point for the storks. They just reference that, well, they, they just say that, yeah, these babies are artificially created by a machine which are which is fueled by letters of people asking for them to be delivered. And, uh, but they do say there are easier ways to make babies. So, yeah, they do reference that human reproduction does exist in this world. So why do you need the storks to deliver more babies? This movie opens saying, since the beginning of time, storks have delivered babies. What? Oh my God! This okay. The, um, the only it makes, it makes no sense. So wait, they've all storks have always been this technologically advanced. How did they? This is this. I don't. I don't know where to begin. This movie is basically like Children of Men, but kids edition. If for those who don't know what Children, or I'm sure you know what Children of Men is, but the basic premise was dystopian UK that turns into a police state. Uh, humans, something happens to the human race where we all become sterile and can't no longer can reproduce, and the government outlaws uh, reproduction as well because of the population overgrowth. And the the premise is that they find a pregnant lady, and the idea is to get deliver the baby and get it to a safe haven and everything. And that's basically what this movie is as well. Since human making making babies is like banned in this business completely. Well, we don't we don't know that. Because well, okay, making babies in the for the stork business, yes. But then again, they do reference oh, human reproduction does exist. Kind of. And so that's that just makes it all the more confusing. Yeah. And the idea with this being that oh, there's one letter that's um. That's creeped into the business saying, oh, we want a baby again. Oh, so they fire up the machine and one baby is made. Yeah, someone is. And, and, and the job is just to try and deliver the baby with the one human that has been with the storks until her 18th birthday. So Which, she's legal. <laughs> Ew. Which yeah, sorry to put that image in is, everyone's head. Is, again, a whole lot of other ethical issues with that. What and the she, hell? They're keeping her hostage for her entire life. Practically, <laughs> yeah. St Stockholm Syndrome, yay! What? What the shit? But you see, you see why I, I'm having trouble kind of differentiating between why this movie is bad or why this movie is amazing? Because, because yeah, this is all, this is all part of it. We're not, we're not trying to, uh, we're not like looking into something like oh the kool-aid man's like a pedophile type we're, type we're, idea we're not trying to look too deep into this but these this are these right are in you know, front of us yes this is still just topical stuff because this okay biggest i we both thought that we both enjoyed it but this, I, ha this I has a lot more than i thought i was gonna laugh but this has so many scattershot problems mine being there this narrative is so flimsy like this bear, like even with Sausage Party, where the randomness dump did come out, uh, come out sporadically, we, it still we, it it we, still had a story. We can come out and say it. Sausage Party, I think, was the better movie. Oh yeah, personally, I, I still love Sausage I Party. Didn't, for I didn't, I didn't think that was gonna happen, but yeah, but yeah, this it, it, it this tries the same gimmick as Sausage Party by having by having to be. Fast-paced comedy, not necessarily... Well, they did have the obvious bits where they just explained what they were doing, but in, like, a sarcastic, funny way. <laughs> oh, ha, ha, I... Yes, I urined on the seat. That is my urine. Yeah. Uh, but it also does go for the side gags, like when the, the annoying douche um, impersonator has his own, like... Uh, his own, how you like me now, music video... And it just comes out. It it comes out as distracting rather than funny. And Sausage Party did that well when they did the meatloaf skit. But whenever they try and do anything like of that caliber in this, it just feels like the movie has ADD. Mm -hmm. It just won't stick to one straight storyline and just and make jokes off of that. Yeah, I, I would be, I would be, I mean, if it weren't for all the other glaring things in front of this movie for, for its batshit insaneness, I would be complaining a lot more about the, the idea that this is 
a really, really, like, Pepsi Generation type of comedy kids movie. Pepsi Generation, describe. Pepsi Generation, it's meant for the younger, it's meant for the hip, young crowd, uh, really, really fast-paced stuff, which is normally a good thing, but in this case, it's done, it's too, it's done so much that you can't really appreciate anything that's, that's being said. No, although when it, when it's being when um when the fast pace and it's with talking, it's not very good. But when they're doing actions and when it actually oh. involves moving stuff, then it works. Yeah, I mean the slaps the slapstick is the slapstick's fine in this. I think Warner Brothers, you know, has that down pretty well. Looney Tunes, mm-hmm. Animaniacs. Yeah, but but when they're but when they're talking and when they're making jokes, it's it's too fast. It's too fast and. It's not even it's not even that high quality of like fast paced humor. And I've and I've I've gone on to defend to defend like faster paced humor versus slower paced humor uh, before. This this is one of those cases where I think you you really should have really should have slowed it slowed it down a l- even just a little bit. And again it's kind of weird because you have primal fast paced uh, comedy guy Andy Samberg as as one of your leads. And him actually, arguably, uh, his most famous act has been from fast-paced humor with The Lonely Island, because their music videos are just, like, quick, quick jokes. Yeah. Um, But yeah, surprising, well, he was a good part in this, I actually didn't think it was fine, but literally everyone else tries to be like him as well, Mm -hmm. and when you have every, almost every other lead having the exact same mannerisms as the lead character... Then you can't really make any differenti- differentiation between like character traits. Yeah. Then just everybody is a fast-paced quiver, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And then let's let's talk a little bit about uh, Tulip, um, our, f- our female lead, played you, by played by uh, Katie Crown. Katie Crown. Who she sounds like almost every other. Um, possible female voice actor in Hollywood today. She, it, it looked it sounded like a mix of like Elizabeth Banks and Anna Kendrick or it's like so, it's like some somebody, combo. It's like somebody watched Inside Out and looked at Joy and said, <clears throat> I can do that and then tried making her do also mixing her with a lot of Bugs Bunny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean it's Warner Brothers, so I guess okay, fair enough, but Still, it just her her stick got old for me. It got old too quick. I at first at first it's like okay, you know this this character is kind of cute. She's kind of funny. I can kind of get behind her. There's there's one gag where I suppose we we should probably explain a little bit of the plot for this to make sense. Okay. Um. So what so what happens after uh, the explanation of storks no longer make babies? Again, I'm not gonna. Pro- products. They just they just like deliver pro- products. Like products. Okay. Okay. Um. The the main the main guy. Uh. Junior. That's yeah. Name? Yeah. Okay. Which we don't know who the senior is. So. Yeah. So our main guy, Junior, uh, is going up to see the boss, and he's like, "Hey, I will make you boss." And there's some really. <laughs> So, uh, there's so many. They, they no. They ham fist this into the ground. When he, when someone says, "Oh, mind blown," yeah, that's literally what happens. Well, the part that I laughed at is just how unbelievably insensitive this movie is to actually use real life footage of nuclear bombs as part of like the mind blown thing. Yeah, but then again, that would. Uh, I don't know if that would mix better with, like, a real-life comedy if you tried to do real-life imagery with that, because it did do the nuclear blast, but it was, like, colorful powder instead of the mushroom cloud. Not, mu- like, mushroom cloud, but, like, the shockwave or whatever. But I just, I mean, like, again, how- <laughs> this movie doesn't, under- doesn't know what it does. Like, what is wrong with it? But, so, yeah. Anyway. Um, okay, beside the point. Um, see, it's like, I'll make you boss. Boss. Yeah. Yeah, he says it just like that. <laughs> I'll make you boss if you fire if you fire Tulip. And it's like, who's Tulip? Well, she's the uh, she's the orphan girl who never got delivered because the um, 
stork. The stork that was supposed to deliver fell in love with her and wanted to keep her. Again, what the fuck? That is really weird. Um, and then and then they lost their they lost her beacon, which is I guess the only way they know where she's supposed to go. Which again tells you how shitty of a facility this is. If that's the only way you can find out, and once that's broken, well, tough shit. Guess you're living with us now. <sighs> Whatever. So they <laughs> they hate her. They hate her because all she tries all she tries to do is uh, invent stuff that doesn't work. Kind of like every other misfit character in every animated movie and they, comedy movie they ever. Ju- they just want to get rid of her because she's annoying. She's annoying and she's different, which, to be fair, yeah, you probably should get rid of the human, but get her to a decent home, you know? We- Help her find her family. That that doesn't occur to them until the very end of the movie, but whatever. Um, when he wants to fire her, he instead, he, 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 it's one of those moments where it's like, I just can't do it. It's your birthday, and you're too nice or cute morals, and everything. Morals, morals, morals. So he instead puts her in the it puts her in the old building where they used to make babies, and said, "You're gonna be mailroom girl," and <laughs> and it's like the only rule is you can never leave. Okay, bye. <laughs> That's insanity driving, which is what happens to her. Yeah, she gets driven to insanity. She stu- she does the Bugs Bunny routine where she's talking to herself, playing all these different characters, jumping all around the screen and everything. And There's then, so like, many things it. wrong with this psychologically right now because mm-hmm. ju- just having those delusions is border... Well, not necessarily borderline schizophrenia. I mean, people talk to themselves all the time, but she is... She is Recreating scenes. She's, re-en- she's reenacting in physical different roles. This might be, um... Which, I mean... Multiple personality disorder. Yeah. I mean, granted, Bugs Bunny did that all the time, too, and he and he's hilarious, too. But this, it's just, it's different when you when you add in the context that she's an orphan and she's, she's forced to work here. Or, well, not forced to work here, but she's working in this facility that was supposed to get her to a fucking family. God. All right. Eventually, what happens is this boy wants a baby brother. And he constantly says, baby brother, baby brother, baby brother, baby brother. And the parents are like, no, because we can't just uh, squeeze out a baby in an instant, okay? Plus, we're, we're business people because all we think about is business, business, and making money because business, business. Even if they weren't business people, you really just can't tell a kid. It's like, oh, yeah, we'll get you a new kid. Oh, no. Huh, honey? Prep the bed for us tonight. No. I, I mean, even, I, I'll say, I I wanted a baby brother as a kid, and I told my mom that, and she's like, no, sweetie, I can't have babies anymore. <laughs> oh, and, I'm just, and, I'm just, and, I'm just, and I just got sad and everything. <laughs> the only reason I'm laughing is because I know your mom. <laughs> just, <laughs> no, su- no, sweetie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> so anyways, so he finds oh, he, he finds this old pamphlet of, that's advertising the Storks facility and it and he sends them a letter saying, "Hey, I want a baby brother with ninja skills and everything." And it's it's kind of a cute scene, I'll give it that. Um and he s- sends it off. The letter comes to c- relatively quickly cuz they they imply this is this this all takes place the same damn day. No, no. Uh, yes it does because they cause they say it's on your birthday. Her birthday was that day. I guess I didn't pay attention Just... to that. <laughs> this whole movie okay. is blowing his mind. No, it's just melting it. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> okay. All right, so she gets it and has to deliver it to the baby-making machine. Which again... <laughs> Yeah, baby. Uh, the baby it's, making it's, machine. They put in the letter, and it disassembles the letter into molecules and, and rearranges ma- it into a baby <laughs> using black magic and lightning and shit. <laughs> I was expecting like a little pentagram as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, um, at least it didn't show it like at in um. Uh, for the very first baby that they did, because, oh, it had to focus on Junior getting his arm injured. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, at the end, it just shows them popping out of the machine. Ding! Ah! Mm-hmm. And then they put them in pods. 
and then they had to deliver those pods to the house. And that's the premise of the movie, is to get this baby delivered. Um, corporations after them because they can't, because he's like, we can't get this out, it'll destroy our stocks. <laughs> we will lose money because business, business. Yeah, and and then wolves are after them. They, they, when they, when they f- initially fly the plane to the baby, to, to deliver, deliver the, baby, the baby, they crash their plane into the mountains and then they get captured by wolves, played by Key and Peele. Surprisingly, the best part of the well, not surprisingly, the best part of this movie. Yeah, they're pretty funny. Um, oh, they're really funny because yeah. like the animation on well, animation on everybody looks mostly good, but the wolves they look best with it because um, they just fall in love with the baby, obviously, really quickly. And I think they showed this in the trailer too. Mm-hmm. But their like formations and just the creativity that they have with this pack of wolves mm-hmm. like uh it's the it's like the wonder uh whatever twins the wonder twins yeah the wonder twins when they're like form of something these guys these pack of wolves wolf pack form of a wolf boat form of wolf plane form of, form of wolf submarine minivan that was the funniest <laughs> with one. tiny thing as their license plate yep and oh yeah they call it tiny thing Oh, hi, tiny thing. Tiny thing! I mean, that's the point of the movie where you realize, like, just how unbelievably batshit this movie really is. And that's the part where you really have to kind of give up on trying to poke holes in it, even though there's even though there's plenty of other things you can poke into af- after after the wolf thing. But at that point, it's like, you know what? Just accept, just accept, just embrace it. Just embrace it. Fuck it. Fuck it. I give up. Um, not fuck at all, just fuck it. Yeah. And yeah, from there, from there on out, it's just, um, it's just trying to get it, the, get the baby back, on along with, um, al- along with, uh, Tulip, discovering a little bit more about herself, her her legacy, or her, her, her family, with this other creepy. Uh, Stork following them, who who was the initial Stork that fell in love with her, who didn't, Jasper didn't want to deliver, didn't want her delivered, and then and then they 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 pull a bait and switch with the with, with uh, Jasper, which I he's, he's not crazy. Apparently, he just, he's not crazy. He wanted to get her back to her home the entire time, but he, but he searched for the broken pieces of her beacon, and she just happens to have the final piece. Mm-hmm. It's a little contrived, and then and then they do the third the third act breakup thing where he's like, "I was supposed to fire you," and then she cries and's like, "Supposed to go home," and he's just where like, where where fucking where? We know how this ends. Yeah, it's it. From there on out, it 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 pretty much plays exactly like you did. You know, okay, let's let's let me talk a little bit about the, our main characters, Junior and Tulip. They're honestly not bad characters by themselves but they don't really they don't really blend together as much as you want them to because one they're not they're not that drastically different as characters you you said before that everyone's trying to emulate the sort of really fast talking and uh uh self-aware kind of thing that they're they're all just quivers like making quibs all the time yeah and so and so for me it gets kind of tiring after a while listening to the two of them bicker back and forth. Like we said previous, banter and bickering isn't funny. Yeah, at least at least not when that's all that's happening. There's one one scene in particular that goes on for a long time where it's 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 in the beginning where they're where they're getting the baby delivered and she's asking him why what are you what are you gonna do if you become boss? And, and he's like, oh, he's trying to avoid the question because he doesn't want to say that he had to fi- that he'd have to fire her and everything. And then it takes a it takes a pretty dark turn, dramatic dark turn when he's like, what is, what does he say? He's like, eh, no, or he, he like so, something so he, in in honestly, back, he, he, back he, he, he just goes fuck off. Yeah, and she gets he, she falls over the side and almost falls off the plane while it's while it's flying. But anticlimax just pulled right back in. Yeah, it's like, haha. So yeah, it's funny. You almost died. Yeah, disgusting. I know. It's 
I mean, I'm not going to say that there aren't some genuinely working jokes in this movie, and there aren't some some things that are, like, legitimately there, funny. Yeah, there are, that, still, there are still plenty of genuinely funny moments. But, but most of the biggest laughs I had in this movie was just how unaware crazy it is. The surreality of it. Yeah, the I, I said before, the concept of artificial humans is so... Uh, artificial creation of humans. Yeah, it's such a controversial topic among all other fictional uh, pieces that I've read with it, which are a lot, actually. <laughs> um, and then this one just takes a kind of Oh, happy day! Is it so? It's so great to make babies and everything. Let's just let's and and they, it's so it just comes off as what? Like this is so confusing. You you almost I almost wanted to side with the. With the boss, who's like, we have to stop making babies only because, because you don't need to. You don't need to, and you shouldn't. It is ethically wrong to create people. Plus, it just wastes time for your business. It's just the whole concept. The concept of artificial humans is one that just kind of makes my skin crawl. And it's and again, it's a topic that's touched on in so many different stories of why it can be uh, a very bad thing. And so, so just seeing it in this movie done with a big skip and a hop, it just, it's so, it's so surreal to me. And, and, it, and it gets, it gets so funny because at the very end of this movie, the very end of this spoilers, um, no, it's not, it's not fucking spoilers. Everybody can predict what's going to happen. The boss gets taken out and the, the ba- the baby portion of the factory is back up and running. Like, oh, we're going to deliver babies again. whoop de fucking do Yeah. Um, what fart of a finish? Mm-hmm. Nobody, nobody's concerned about population overgrowth. Nobody's concerned about and, whether or and, not no, whether and, or not we can get these pa- babies to a uh, to a healthy family. But so much so that 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 like still in the climax, they were overproducing babies because the controls were messed up. So literally, it was all just overflowing with babies. And okay, okay, okay. Something clever that I did notice in the um. Notice in the ending, they're showing all these babies getting brought to their new families. Yes, they do show, like, the handfuls of parents. Oh, we're so happy, we're so happy. They did throw in a couple where this idea would make sense. The non-naturally producing couples, like um, like the gay community. They do have a lesbian couple holding a baby. They actually do have a gay couple holding a baby as well. Uh, they probably might have shown transgender. I obviously I wouldn't have known, but yeah, they actually do bring up. They actually do present that as a um, as a legitimate thing in this universe. So I guess they were using it. Well, that could have been a benefit to their system, but yeah, it's still, it's it's so much of a stretch when you already have natural reproduction, and with natural reproduction, that's probably. That would probably lead to them having orphanages and um, foster homes and all that. So, again, no need for the storks. But, regardless, babies are being flown out everywhere now. Everywhere in the entire world, there are storks flying around with babies. They fly over the slums of India, and I'm imme- and I immediately like burst out laughing. Like I can't. He, could, he couldn't control himself. It was like when he was laughing during the sausage party review, except this was worse. He was he could not stop. Yeah, just because all I could think about was that WKUK sketch. Whitest kids you know, because sometimes people are confused by that. Okay, the whitest kids you know sketch, where the guy is is in a is in a baby factory with storks, just like this movie, and a business suit man comes in and tells him, you know, we probably should we probably should stop production for a little while because of uh, population overgrowth and whatnot and everything, <laughs> and um, he, and he. 
the, the joke is that this guy is, not only is making a lot of babies, but he's sending them to like all the wrong places because he's because he's like he, he's sending them to India, he China, he takes, Russia. He takes three babies and he's like to India, to India, to India. <laughs> away, Stark, away. <laughs> or there's this other one where it's like to a girl with AIDS, and he's like, oh, why would you do that? She she needs a baby to cheer her up because she has AIDS. <laughs> Which is exactly what I think is is this it's <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's no, problems, again. problems that should be addressed in this movie, but they're not. It's it's apparently a complete hunky dory world where where it doesn't matter basically a world where nothing happens. What I don't I really don't know. You could I could spend an hour poking so much into the ridiculousness of this movie, or I could just it just just accept it just accept it and kind of say all right i had fun massage your head to say we don't care we don't care okay ow ow <laughs> trying to help you man okay we well, were pushing my skull ow well so yeah oh and all yeah that there's, be, there's, there's all a, that being said it's it's all right well, the movie's all right. It it was fine. Like it was nothing offensive. It, it was harmless. harmless. Harm a harmless kids movie. If you want a recommendation, I'd say unless unless you're bringing your kids, unless you're bringing your, your kids, your, kid, to see this your kids movie, will your kids will laugh their hearts out. Or I was gonna say asses off, but yeah, they they will laugh, but. Make sure that they don't have too much sugar because they will probably be talking and shouting in the middle of the theater during yeah. this movie. And if you're if you're by yourself, um, I'd say unless you like you you watch the trailers and you think you're mm. really really in to get into this thing. I don't think anybody is gonna watch this solo. They have to be with others when watching it. Yeah, I'd say at that point, maybe wait, maybe wait, wait for, for the DVD for a rental. Wait to rent it or Netflix. And it's and it's a very for me it's a very one and done movie, like I see I've seen it once. All right, it's all it's all right. I don't have, I don't really want to see it again. I don't need to see it again either, but it wouldn't bother me if I did. Yeah, it's it's an entertaining waste of time. Yeah, I feel about this the same way that other felt that other people felt about uh, Despicable Me too. It's just an entertaining waste of time. I didn't see Despicable Me too. That's because you hate Despicable Me. I didn't like Despicable Me. So you hate it. I once hates a strong. You hate it. Hates a strong. You hate it. I didn't. You like hate it. it. You hate it. So, um, am I pushing your buttons? 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 Huh? Am I pushing your buttons? Fuck <laughs> off! <laughs> That's exactly what I prepared for a lot of that. And uh, if you're gonna, no, if you're it's go it's shocked movie. both of us too. Yeah. Oh, and, oh, by far one of the well, the only two bad characters in this are the boss and the um fuck a pigeon toad, I think. He who, just, he who, just talks like the Who is really just the children child friendly version of, of the, the douche. douche from Sausage Party. Come at me, bro. Oh, I like with now. How did when he's didn't douche actually say that in the movie? What? How you like me now? Yeah. His, after his, he hit, no, after his he, thing was come at me, bro. I swear, after he like drank a bunch of uh, a bunch of alcohols dry, he's like, how you like me now? Or, I don't know. No, right. but no, this one's worse because he has less to say and more of an important role, though. Oh. That's another thing I wanted to bring up. Did he not look a lot like Egg- Egbert to you? Egbert. Yeah. The the Lo- the Looney Tunes guy or the maybe Oh uh, the no, the Animaniacs version of um of Siskel and Egbert? No. Siskel and Egbert or whatever it was. No, no, there's a, there was a bird. I, I 
God, I'm struggling to think where... I, I, I know it was a Warner Brothers cartoon of some kind. Maybe it was a Daffy Duck short, but there was this bird with, with like, big round glasses and everything, and his name was Egg something. Egg, I, I want to say Eggbert because he, cause Daffy asks him, it's like, why do they call you that? And he draws him a picture of an egg, and he's like, well, if you don't want to tell me, that's fine. Um... Yeah. He, he was this he, movie's like a reunion of all the great like animated birds. There's Eggbert, there's Chicken Boo, there's uh uh Go Go from uh Tiny Toons, <laughs> there's uh the the one seagull from Rescuers Down Under who I, who is very looks very much like ja- or uh, Jasper looks very much like uh, Is it Orville or Wilbur? I don't know. He's played uh, by John Candy. No, I think it's Wilbur. Okay. But yeah, that's the one thing. That's the probably the more most interesting thing about this movie was like thinking I'm, they're getting their they're getting their inspiration from a lot of different well, places. Just, the Warner Brothers is just digging deep into their vaults. Yeah. Well, and they they have to they have to pray. And, well, just give thanks to the Lego Movie that they now have their own studio for. Well, now have their own studio again for their animation. Oh, and there was also a short film before this, which was actually funny. Yeah, surprisingly good. And again, stop motion Lego because again they have to suck Lego movies dick. Yeah, we're getting three three new Lego movies, I think. Lego Lego Batman actually does look fun. Yeah, that, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, Michael Cera as Robin. That's actually going to be pretty funny. Well, obviously you're going to like it because Michael Cera is your boy. I mean, he was good. He was good in Sausage Party too. Uh, he, um, he was all right in Sausage Party. He was fine enough. Uh, but uh, yes, him, him as Robin does actually sound perfect because they're just doing. They're just the eternal boy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it does look funny. Uh, and it actually does look like it would actually pay good satire towards. Uh, one of the most famous characters in the world. What's the other Lego movie that's going to come out? I think it's like Nin- Ninja Go, Nin- Ninjago, something weird like that. Something mm. about ninjas. Didn't and then, it. and then there is actually going to be a Lego movie too. Okay, that I'm actually going to look forward to. Because of how much I love the first one. But yeah, the short in this was funny. Uh, people could recognize the stick right away. It's the character trying to get the actions perfectly before like the opening or like a trailer or something and it's like he come he comes from some land he is the mass he is the master of his craft nothing will stand in his way for he truly is and he's trying to kick the lego pieces into place to spell his name the master and this chicken <laughs> okay. The, yes, the chicken or the rooster that's like outside the Chinese palace just keeps on screwing it up and knocking over the letters. And then it becomes sort of like Presto, the short film from Pixar, where the animal is just creating the worst time for the master. And they eventually come together and say, The masters punch a chicken. Good payoff. Oh, J- uh, Jackie Chan is the master, which I thought you would have gone nuts for because you love Jackie Chan. I didn't. I didn't look at the credits. No, you could tell that was Jackie Chan. How could you not tell that was Jackie Chan's voice? Have you seen Kung Fu Panda? Yes, unfortunately. Oh, I love Kung Fu Panda. It's okay. Love the first one. Actually, love the second one. Actually, you know what's what's unfortunate is that. The worst for me, anyway. I like Kung Fu Panda, but the worst part about it is Poe. I strongly disagree. Love okay. Poe. I like every. I like everybody else though. Oh, well. uh, so this Man. is act- so yeah. Storks actually a surprise for us. It was a good time. We didn't. Th- um. Let's think. Um. Po- for me, it possibly might have been a more entertaining time than Deepwater Horizon. But then again, I usually am more susceptible to comedies because obviously it makes you laugh. It makes you feel happy inside. Yeah. And yeah. To me, it just. It's. It, it was so crazy that I could not 
look away. <sighs> I'm not going to say I loved it, nor did I hate it. It was definitely a thing. I saw it once. I had a decent time. But that's it. No, I'm not going back. Just forward. Yeah. Till we try and find something next week that doesn't look that good and we just go back on something that came out recently. Yeah. Yeah, the reason we saw this, well, again from earlier, there isn't that much good stuff coming out this weekend. Because the only other one was Girl on the Train, which that was only getting mediocre reviews. And, yeah, I, I've, I have had it with watching racial movies. I'm... I don't want to watch anymore. We seem to get one of them, like, every year now. Well, yeah, and especially because 12, uh, 12 Years a Slave won Best Picture three years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'll, now they're realizing it'll also make money. Yeah. I hope, I really hope slavery movies don't turn into, like, the new Holocaust-type movies. Oh, God, Where they, like, no. sweep the floor, sweep well, the Oscars. Well, they, they will absolutely, well, race movies have been doing a good job at Oscars for a long, not, for a long nothing, time. It has nothing to do with, with the topic. It's a touchy topic, and it's difficult to, uh, it's difficult to tell, but at the same time, there's only so many ways to tell it. There's only so many ways to, uh... To be like, yeah, slavery was was Sla- bad. Slavery, Sla- racism, bad, yeah. bigotry, be equal. Ba- black people had it pretty bad, and white people were not nice. I, I, un- be, uh, I understand. Be nice to your fellow man, even if he's different. Yes. Ugh. So, and so. I don't, I don't treat people. I don't treat. People of other races poorly. He doesn't. So why do we need to be reaffirmed of it constantly? Well, I mean, it's it is it is important to remember history, so that, you never it, repeat it. Okay, yes, that is very true. But but like I said, there's only so many times you can you can repeat what's already been said. Yep. So we so might I, we so. might I don't know. It de- it really depends on how it goes. We might see it. It is it is getting a lot of reviews, good reviews. So. We don't know. Although it is weird that it took the title of possibly one of the most racist movies ever made. No, see, that's I, that's what they call irony. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, we'll we'll see you guys with whatever we do next. Wolfpack, form of closing.